have here are eight cards I've just taken out. Now, one of these eight cards is unique. I want you to try, I guess, which one of these eight cards is unique. I'll give you a second. Let's say you were to think of this card right here, the Four of Clubs. I'd say that's very interesting. See, the rest of the cards that we have are blue, but it just so happened that the one card you chose was red. How exactly was that just done? This is without doubt one of the most visually powerful card tricks in the history of card magic. Now, obviously, it didn't give you the greatest effect because, for you know, that could have been set up, but let me teach you how that trick was done and how you can do this trick to a spectator in person where they can choose any card they want. Before we do that, let me announce the new deck giveaway. So, what do we have in store tonight for you awesome people? Firstly, I just want to say, I'm sorry that I can't give more decks. I would love to, but um, these are financially not the easiest things to do. <laughs> but I'm giving away back to you guys a deck of cards, so... If you want to go into the chances of winning one of these great decks of cards, if you want to learn, start learning card magic, start learning magic from the tricks that I show on these videos. Heck, even if you just want a deck of cards to play with some friends, some card games at home with the family, or if you want me to sign it, whatever you like, I'll be giving away a deck of cards to four lucky winners. So, the cards I use, the bicycles, we have a sealed red bicycle cards sealed packet of red cards personal favorite as well as a blue sealed packet of bicycle playing cards next up we have the bicycle side show freaks now this is one of my most favorite decks oh, I really love back designs and this back design is truly magnificent. So, um, of course, it'll be sealed. I'm just showing it for demonstrative purposes. So, this is the back. And these just feel so nice, honestly. Feel different from a regular pack of cards. I really like the thicker borders on these cards. So, just to show the faces, they have a bit more of a interesting darkish reddish feel. But the best thing are the royals. That's the Jack of Hearts. This is the Queen of Diamonds. King of Spades. All of them have very unique, interesting designs. So, if you want one of the more fancier decks, one of the more valuable decks, you can participate for that. But, of course, but the creme de la crop would be this sealed pack of smoke playing cards by Dan and Dave. Very, very special. To give you an idea of what it looks like, here's an opened version. Such a marvelous deck. So a lucky winner would win a deck like this. And um, yeah, so those are the decks we're giving away. 
I suggest you all enter this. You have nothing to lose. Just comment down below. That's all you have to do. You don't have to like the video or subscribe. Just by liking the videos and by subscribing is more than enough and lets me know that you guys want more of this content. All you have to do if you want to go into the chances of winning one of these decks is just comment down below. You have nothing to lose. You don't need to subscribe, although I would really appreciate a thumbs up. Uh, as you know, these videos are costly and by giving the video a thumbs up, by commenting, by joining the giveaway, it lets me know that you guys want more of this kind of content. So feel free to thumbs up the video. It means the whole wide world to me. And uh, with that said, let's teach you guys some epic card tricks and best of luck. And I hope that you win the giveaway. So how exactly did we do this brainwave card trick? So how exactly is this done? You can really do this trick to an actual spectator. They can think of any card and you can do the exact same trick. So what you want to do is have four cards that are red or any color and four cards that are of a different color. So what you want to do is organize it in such a way where they are alternating. Like so. So you can have these eight cards in your pocket, whatever suits you. So what you do is you bring the cards out and just spread them out. And you say to your spectator, one of these cards are different, but it's up to you to define which one of these are different. You can choose anyone and they really can. So say they pick the six, right? So you say, okay, that's fine. So what you need to do is you need to cut to that six and just place that to the side. Next, what's going to happen is you're going to cut the remaining cards over the bottom packet. So what that's just done is you're now in this setup where the opposite color is on the top to the card selected. So again, from this point of view, let's say they select this card right here, place that aside, put the rest on top. So now you're in this position. Okay, so back to your performance style. Say they pick the two, that's fine. Cut that there. In this case, the cards would be like this and the two would be there. So once they've done that, you say, well, that's very interesting. Now, how do you reveal that these cards are all blue when clearly half of them are red? Well, it's a little illusion. What you're going to do is this. You're going to pass one card over and you're going to flip the backs they think to the eye this is blue when in reality that's red but you're doing it swiftly cleanly and easily enough to do that after you've revealed you're going to peel off one and drop the two repeat peel off show drop peel off show drop and then the last card of course is blue but one card is red. So, again, performance speed. They think of any card, say the red one or the black, four of clubs. Say that's interesting. Remember to do the cut. You say all these cards were blue. Right. But one card was a different color, which was of clubs that you chose. And so that is the brainwave card trick. Definitely a very, very uh, next level, you know, taking that magic to the next level and it's very easy to do for anyone. So this next card trick is a very special one. I'm going to give the cards a bit of a mix. Right? Give them a bit of a table shuffle.
few cards. So let's take any card, say the Ace of Diamonds. So every card has a pair. In this case, the Ace of Diamonds would have a pair that would be, say, I don't know, the Ace of Hearts, right? So that's very simple. Say we take the next card, say the Ace of Spades, well then the partner to that would be the Ace of Clubs. Makes sense, right? I can keep giving this a mix. Say we take the two, the pair, the pair to that would have to be the two of clubs. Let me try do this a bit quicker. One sec. Give the cards a cut. And one more cut. And one more little shuffle. Like this. That's a pair, and these are pairs, and that's a pair, 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 and that's the last pair. So, a few pairs, but I digress. With all these pairs, we can maybe now do some other card tricks. Let me take these. Give them a bit of a mix. All right. And from here, I'd ask the spectator to select any card from the pack. Say, Ten of Hearts. That's fine. They can choose that Ten of Hearts. Take that Ten and lose it somewhere in the pack. Is it right? That's the ten of diamonds. Why is it when every time I snap, the ten of hearts just jumps to the top? Right? I'll show you again. If I take that ten, put it in the middle, and wait, and snap, then it jumps back up to the top. See, this hardly makes sense. Let's say. Is it it was somewhere else, right? If I snap, it should now be here. Makes no exact sense. How is that possible? Well, what if I show you the card going face up into the deck, right? So, right about in the middle. And I want to say, show you it jumping up. Seven of clubs, but just like that, the ten jumps back up. So, there's a lot of things that don't necessarily make sense. For example, like how does it then come out of the card box, or how is it that if I snap, then it will jump to the bottom? Doesn't make too much sense. I take two cards then. The two jacks. I place one on top and one on bottom. And I s take them and snap just like that. They'll find a card, your ten. Similarly, if I take this ten again, shuffle that back, take out two jacks, and place one on. Just putting them on the top and cutting that into the middle. Watch. Just like that. The ten will come out over here. One more time. Let's try this. So we take jacks, right? Place the 
let's say right down here. Now, let's say you choose. We have your ten of hearts. Here's what I don't understand. If we take our jacks, square them up, and just pass them through the deck, how is it possible that one card traps itself in between those two jacks? Doesn't really make too much sense. Here's that even cooler thing. If I place that ten a good halfway into the deck, you'll watch the ten jump in between the jacks like this. One, two, three. Interesting stuff. But we understand that jacks can find your card. What about the ten? What exactly can that ten do? haven't seen well. Interestingly enough, we're aware that the 10 can jump to the top of the pack like so. That's nothing new. Take the 10 and just give an interesting motion with the packet. Take it back out and it changes now into a 5. So now we have a 5. What can we do with this five? Well, the five can do some interesting things like change into a three with this three. We can give that a few cards. Put that more or less in the middle, right? We take the top card, say the seven. On a hot day, we can kind of rub the ink and change the ink so that it instead changes into the three, right? the 10. That makes sense. Of course, how could I be so silly? I mean, you could stay stop really anywhere and we'd get that 10, but I digress. What about, say, if we take this 10, give it a few cuts, right? Move that somewhere. And then it starts to look like every card starts looking like the, the ten. Interesting stuff. Sorry about that. I got a little bit uh, carried away from the shenanigans. But it's now time to teach you guys another trick. So, what we're going to be teaching you is just a selected card and then use the in this case the two jacks to locate and track down that card so here's what that looked like so we had a selected card say the ace of clubs we gave that a little bit of a mix we took our two detectives we placed one on top one on bottom snapped and one card appeared exactly is that done? Well, you want to start off first of all with your two detectives. In this case, two jacks. Joe, Joe. So, what happens is, get your spectator to select a card. Say they pick this one. Now, as they select their card, you're going to want to glimpse the bottom card of the deck. In this case, so, get your spectator to place the card on top of the pack, and then they can cut the cards, just like that. Now, when your uh, spectator gets to handle the cards, it puts in place a realistic idea that you have no control of the cards, when in reality, you're then going to pick up the cards and say, I'm going to look at the cards for the jacks and see if I have an idea where or what your card could be. So, start looking through the cards and make small talk. You want to distract your spectator. 
Now, as you're looking, you're going to look for that key card, in this case, the Four of Diamonds. Now, we know that the card under this is their selected card, in this case, the Ten. So we cut that to the bottom. Say, OK, I have a pretty good idea. Next, you're going to take your two jacks, place one on top, and one on bottom. Now, you'll notice that the jack on the bottom is just slightly out like this. That is because we can then grip this bottom card. So you're going to get in this position where your fingers, your first joint, are just touching that 10. Now, if you toss the cards and just let go of that pressure, the cards will naturally slide and you will get that bottom card. So, once again, Bottom. Move the cards like so, grip, and just simply toss. And just like that, you've done the trick. So let me know how that goes. But um, thanks so much for watching nonetheless. I hope you enjoyed. Um, great luck for all the giveaways. I hope you win, and we'll see you next time.